Welcome back, everybody, um, to part two of the gunfire effect. And um, following on from what we did in part one, uh, we basically finished off with actually simming out our pyro effect. So um, once you have simmed it out, just make sure you've got it load from disk. Um, otherwise, you'll still be doing it from the dot network. So uh, we've got that loading from the disk now. Um, I've brought mine in and the detail is a lot lot more um, I have noticed one little problem here which is this bit at the top it seems like it's cut off for some reason um, shouldn't be doing that but um, anyway we're just gonna go with it it shouldn't hopefully have done it for you if it has uh, just come into the dot network and rescale uh, your box so I, I needed to make my box a little bit bigger. So um, if you guys come up with that problem, just make the box enlarge or come over to gas resize and unclamp it. So anyway, we're done with the dot network. Now we're going to actually um, add in the camera, the lighting and the rendering. So first of all, um, if you add in a light, you can add in, uh, if we come over to lights, you can add in a skylight, which is kind of like the default environment light, which automatically brings in a sky um, filter for it. But I went for the environment light. And I imported my own um, HDRI, which I actually got from the same place um, here. But instead of 3D model, if you come up to the top here, it shows 3D model haven. You got the HDRI and you got the texture. So if you come over to the HDRI haven.com, come down to browse 200 plus HDRIs. So uh, you can come in here, they're all free. You can download whichever one you want. Um, I'm not 100% sure which I downloaded. I've downloaded plenty of these. Um, I think I used that one, maybe. I have used that one in the past, which is a really good one, so I recommend that one. But uh, just pick a, a couple out there. Um, I have the Lakeside, so if you find the Lakeside, um, just download that. I recommend just getting the 2K one as well. You don't want to do over the top on the uh, render. So we've got that in there. Um, I can actually come over to here and if we bring on the light, we have it in here. Um, and if I just bring this up, we'll have our smoke in there. It is just black at the moment, which is fine. Um, in the render, it look a lot, lot better. So I'm just going to quickly render this. Uh, we've got the preview on here. Okay, so um, this render time actually took 2 minutes and 30 seconds just to do this. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to quickly show you, if you come into the out output, so if you just click on this tab here and go to out, because um, we've already done a render, it should automatically import the mantra um, node. What you want to come do is you want to come over to rendering, sampling and you want to come down to the noise level just turn that to a one and you'll see a big difference happening now so um i'll be back with you in a second so already um you can tell that it has reduced it by a lot um it's actually taken only 20 seconds yes it is a little bit more noisier but um for what we're doing now uh, before our actual final render um it's quite good to just quickly preview the whole thing instead of actually to do it in patches so uh, that is a very good tip to note down next what you guys want to do is actually come over to the material palette this is where we're going to add in our material for the actual um, fire slash smoke so if you come down to basic smoke we're going to drag that across and we're going to just drag that straight onto the smoke itself You'll notice that it'll start actually rendering this out now. I'm just going to show the preview. Uh, come up over here to the preview. So already you can see there's a bit of a fire effect going on along here. I'm going to move this down to around about 50 frames in just so we get a different perspective. So yeah, there's a lot of fire there. If you want that, that's fab. But for this exercise, we want to try and get rid of the majority of this. We don't want too much here. And we don't want it on for too long. So we're going to come back to around about 50. And what you want to do is you want to come to the general here. We're going to turn the density of the smoke down to 
roughly around about 0.4 for the moment. We are also going to turn the smoke color to uh, roughly in the middle of the black and the white. So we've got a bit of a light gray there. The intensity can stay at around about 2. You could probably push it up a bit more to like 3. It will in make the intensity of the fire up a little bit more. The temperature scale I'd leave there. So I would leave the color temperature to um, 5000 there. I will show you quickly if you bring it down it'll make it go a bit more red. If you bring it up it'll make it look a lot lot more white. Um, it just changes the kind of temperature there. So you can have a bit of a mess around with that. Uh, I am going to personally leave it at 5000. I'm just going to quickly go through all the settings here uh, to give you a perspective of what you can change. Uh, also, to get these here, you need to make sure this is on the uh, physical, the black body. It sometimes is on the constant or the ramp, but just make sure it's on the um, actual black body uh, color there. The burn, I would recommend putting all the way to 2. And there you go, you've got a bit more of a flare there. I am going to move it up the timeline a little bit just to see what it looks like. Um, I kind of have this little bit of effect here which I accidentally left in uh, which is fine because it for this kind of um, effect it adds a little bit more of a um, cinematic look. The bit of the heat coming from the actual bar of the gun leaving a bit of a smoke trail which I think is quite cool. Um, so I'm leaving that in there anyway. So now to actually reduce this fire we want to come over to the fire intensity field and we want to bring this down um, just a couple of notches, maybe come to around about, we're going to try 0.1. I'm just going to quickly scroll through a couple of these, uh, see when the best bit is. So that there isn't too bad. Yep, that seems absolutely fine. I am going to just quickly render this out to see what this looks like with the intensity of the smoke. And if it's too much, I might have to bring it down. If it's not so much, I might have to bring it back up, but we'll see. Okay, so I reckon we might need to bring the smoke intensity down a tad because uh, it, it just seems too much for actually what we had here for the reference. So the smoke intensity doesn't seem like it's too crazy. It looks like there's quite a bit there first, but afterwards it kind of dies down a lot. So we're going to have to change that to 0 0.2. 2 or 1 for the moment. I'm just going to quickly have a look, see if it does much. Okay, so I quickly made a, a few changes here. I'm just going to go through them with you. Um, I left the density to scale to 0.1 and I actually went over to the fire intensity field and I changed it down uh, the file scale to 0.058 uh, and roughly around there you should be fine. So um, this is the final outcome. And what we're going to do now is just quickly go over to the out output and we're actually going to select the mantra and we're going to make sure everything is up to spec so we can render. So first of all, you want it so you can uh, render the frame range. You want it to start from frame one and you also want it to go to 120 or to wherever the fire stops. Um, I'm going to leave it at 120 because even if it stops up, 105 we just clip it there and uh, post make sure you got the right camera uh, so for this I've got camera one uh, if you come over to the image you shouldn't have to change anything here apart from if you select this copy and then paste it to wherever you need to render your images out uh, make sure it's a uh, EXR uh, for both of them come over to the rendering and the pixel sample here is the quality of the final outcome so I wouldn't go anywhere above 10 and I wouldn't really go anything below 3 so anything between there is fine the lower uh, the quicker the render is going to be so now if you remember that we changed the noise we're going to change this now and we're going to put it back to 0 0.01 which means the renders will take a lot longer um, but if I quickly just zoom in here You'll see that there is the slightest bit of detail that's added in, but uh, nothing too crazy. If I just exit that. Um, and we're just going to leave that there. Make sure you come over here, make sure you save your pro uh, project, and come up and hit the render to dish or render to dish in background. 
If you render the dish in background, that means you can still come in here and you can edit a bit more. If you render it to the dish, then that means you can't use Houdini until that's finished. So I'm just going to quickly go render this and uh, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I left my render overnight and I'm back here again and I think it took roughly a couple of hours. It didn't take too long. Um, so we're just going to minimize Houdini for a sec and what we're going to actually do is we're going to open up Premiere Pro. Um, if you don't have Premiere Pro, After Effects is also quite good. Um, it's just the matter of speeding up parts and also color correcting. Um, Nuke is also a really big one as well. Um, they use that quite a lot in the industry. Um, if you're an effects artist like me, you don't really need to know that much apart from you just need to know how to composite other footage together. And uh, when I went to MPC, it actually showed how to do each one of those. And you obviously got people around, so you learn on site there. But I will download Nuke and I will also cover that in further tutorials later on down the line. So next, what you want to do is you actually want to come up to the top and uh, just go file Nuke and open up a project. So I'm just gonna call this um, Gunfire, and I'm gonna make sure this goes to where I want it to be saved. Okie dokie, so this should open up the scene. All we need to do now is we actually need to import our render. So double click into this area. This is to import the footage. I'm gonna come down to the one that I need to import. I just click it and open. And what you're going to do is drag that into the timeline down here and it'll appear. And if we just play this back right now, you'll see the explosion happening with bullet coming out and you've got a little bit of uh, smoke and uh, fire in there as well. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to clip this and also speed parts of it up. So first of all, what you want to do is you actually want to come to where the explosion starts. So roughly around about there, you're going to press C and you want to cut it. You can also come down to these options here, which is cut there and the uh, select tool there as well. So if we move this up to roughly around about just before the bullet comes out and clip that there. We're now going to click on it, right click, and we're gonna come down to speed and duration. And we're gonna make this 300 times quicker. So that'll speed it up for us. If we play this back now, it looks so much better. And as you can see, the smoke is quite slow and we wanna speed that up a little bit more. So we're gonna right click in here and we're also going to come down to speed and duration. I'm gonna do that by 200. Now, if we play this back now, much better. So, we've got this now, and all we need to do is color correct it. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm actually gonna come up to these tabs up here, and I'm gonna click on color. This will bring up the color correction panel over here, and what you wanna do is, before we actually put any kind of effects onto this, we need to add in an adjustment layer. So if you come over to the box where we imported our footage and just right click, new item and an adjustment layer. So this is exactly the same as After Effects. I'm just gonna clip that there and delete that. So now we've got an adjustment layer on the top. Nothing's been done as we haven't added an effect onto the adjustment layer. So I'm gonna make sure you click on it and then we're gonna come up to the top right here and we're gonna change a couple of the settings. I'm gonna make sure that I'm on a decent frame. So roughly around about in the middle. So you got a bit of the fire and that. We're gonna try and get rid of majority of this fire now. Um, first of all, we're gonna just change the contrast. We're gonna bring the contrast up. This is mostly doing the gun at the moment. So if you bring up the exposure, it's affecting more so the gun. So I'd leave it, the exposure there, contrast up, bring a little bit of the highlights, um, get rid of some of the shadows, maybe a little bit of the whites and get rid of the blacks. Next, you wanna skip the creative and you wanna come over to the actual curves itself. So now we've got this little line coming in here. We're gonna actually make like an S shape. So bring the bottom bit down and that bit up there, that adds a bit more contrast to the final image the hue and saturation we want to bring this down so we get rid of our saturation 
as you can see now it's getting rid of the actual fire it's more gone towards just a smoke look but you have got the tint of um fire in there so that's what we want we're going to leave this one uh, we're going to come down to this one this will basically make it brighter or darker um we're going to come up a little bit halfway between the middle and the top this one here um bring it down just a tad nothing too crazy and um this one here bring it down as well so now we've got the color correction pretty much done it's basically a black and white um theme which is what we want because we want only the um smoke we don't really want the fire in this so yeah that's pretty much it all you need to do now is highlight it all come up to file uh, export media and now what you want to make sure is the format is on h.264 and you want to go to your output and mine is already going to the um, fire so i can change this to tutorial gunfire i'm just going to put that yep and save that now all the settings should be fine uh audio now what you want to do is you want to export it it shouldn't take too long so i'm just going to leave this playing so um yeah that's the effect and i hope you guys enjoyed hopefully you learned something from this you can go back and you can redesign the actual explosion coming out I recommend doing that, trying to get your own little part in there. And um, I will see you in the next video.